Hello everybody, Josh12 back here again with another video and I'm here with my official review for Game of Thrones Season 6 Episode 9 titled Battle of the Bastards. Now of course if you haven't seen this episode, please go check it out because this review may contain spoilers. But that being said, let's get into the newest episode of HBO's original series Game of Thrones. Now of course this was the episode I was most looking forward to and also dreading. But before we get into the creme de la creme of this episode and the main focal point, let's get into the side stuff because it's very short and I have very few things to talk about when it comes to it. And that is of course the Battle of Marin. Let's put it out there. Daenerys' storyline for the most part of this season has been very unenthusiastically lackluster for me. As a fan of Game of Thrones, I have not been a big fan of Daenerys and her storyline of this season. I mean, we saw her go from being nothing again, going through all this Dothraki shit, and then, of course, you know, climactically, you know, getting naked and burning in fire again, and then that, that's kind of like where you kind of go with her. And then that's it. She gets her power back, and now she's back here, and we have a battle of where she has to deal with the Masters, and it was okay. That's the kind of like the best thing I can say about it. I feel like this episode should be just the nail on the coffin of her storyline for this season alone. Of course, I'm guessing we're going to get some more stuff next episode, which will be the finale, but for the most part, I feel like her story as of late is very just uninteresting, but I think it's kind of come full circle. She has her power back. She has this huge Dothraki army back. She has control of her dragons again. She's taken down the masters, and now she's come full circle with the Greyjoys. Yes, Theon and, her, and his sister have come, and they've come in contact with Daenerys. They're going to create some kind of pact here where she's going to help the Greyjoys get their power back over at the Iron Islands, and of course, you know, they'll help her with ships and what have you to create a bigger army whenever... I guess Daenerys takes on Westeros and takes King's Landing as she is Trueborn or what have you. And for the most part, that was also kind of cool. It's a, it's always very good when you get to see characters who've been a part of this show for the most part of the entirety of its series and finally getting to see each other for the first time, which was really nice. I mean, Theon seeing freaking Tyrion again, which was hilarious. I mean, Peter Dinklage is awesome as always, but just to see him react to Theon again and just give him shit for all the short chokes is just classic. And of course, Daenerys seeing them for the first time as well is also very interesting. It's just really good as a fan to actually see characters who don't normally have scenes together ever ever on the show finally have a scene together it's just very gratifying but of course with that being said it pretty much comes full circle i'm pretty sure we will get more stuff with that in the finale but for the most part for me i feel like this entire story has kind of come full circle and i want to see something more epic and interesting with the next season when it comes to denarius and i'm just saying like when are we going to get to that point where she's going to go off the king's landing i mean it needs to happen already i'm just sick of it but um yeah the gray joys got to deal with the gray joys got to deal with the iron islands and then we'll see See what happens when it comes to King's Landing but with that being said it was kind of cool to see the dragons kick some ass it was kind of cool to see Daenerys and Tyrion talk about what kind of queen she could be or whatever and how we're going to be different from our fathers or what have you which is really the big question is she going to become the mad queen who knows but we'll see what happens but let's get into the creme de la creme the best part of this season Oh my god. Battle of the Bastards could go down as the best episode of Game of Thrones ever. I That might be overreaching. I still feel like, you know, uh, they're just the Red Wedding. There's a lot of things in Game of Thrones history and lore that really has been perfection, but this episode really gets right up there, or maybe even tops it. I know for sure it's definitely my favorite episode and the best episode this entire season. But it could be one of the best episodes, or at least the greatest battle we've ever seen, fight, war we've seen in Game of Thrones history. And we've seen a lot of great ones, a lot with Jon Snow as well, and this tops them all. I mean, like, The Wall, Hard Home, none of that shit comes close to the Battle of the Bastards. This was epic. I feel like Game of Thrones, HBO, took all their money and stole some money from some action movies, and were like, we're gonna take that shit, and we're gonna put it to this one fucking episode, and it was well worth it. The shots were amazing. The effects, the amount of manpower and bodies they were able to put into this one section of the episode. Oh my god, it was phenomenal. The photography was phenomenal. The staging was great. The stunt work, the acting, 
it was just a perfect still of how you do action sequences and how you do great battles of war. This was awesome. And I think the great thing about this episode, not less, more or less is the battle itself, but what leads up to the battle and, of course, the outcome. Now, let's start off with the beginning, the setups. Ramsey meeting John. That is amazing. And very much like Theon seeing Daenerys for the first time and Tyrion again, this was very much epic. It was really great to see these two bastards, if you will, finally seeing each other for the first time. They've heard so much about each other, and it's time for them to fight. And I loved how they played off against each other. I mean, John just testing out, trying to piss him off, trying to be like, you know what? I can kick your ass. You want to fight? We'll fight, but let's just do it one-on-one. -on -one. And Ramsey knows he's really good. Good. He's a sadistic fuck. He knows how to fuck with people. He doesn't want to fight them. He wants to beat them and he wants to torture them while he's doing it. And that's just the kind of guy he is. And I feel like it just played off well. Character wise, characterization wise, this episode defines what these characters are like. And, and even a great, you know, tension building episodes. This really set them up great. And this was just amazing. It's really great to see the hero and the villain have words before their great battle. I feel like every great story, when it comes to a classical hero versus a classical villain, always needs a great talk of what is the difference of their fundamentals and their beliefs and their systems and how they're going to fight off against each other and just battle it out. I love that. And, I, and they, this episode gave that to us. Even the talks even between each other, you know, like fucking Sansa and John, or John with Davos, or John with the Red Witch. It's just so great to see, like, John knows it's impossible kind of to win. Sansa knows Ramsey more than John. John's kind of underestimating the situation, like he kind of has for the majority of this setup to the battle. And Sansa plays out like, this is what's going to happen. Don't you see what's happening? I love that they did those setups. It was just really freaking great. And Davos, oh my god, he, he you can already see that he's really setting up a, a very high standard for acting because he's so freaking good. And the, and the second he finds the freaking... The damn little statue, burnt up statue. It's it's very sad, but also like this is gonna be a great setup to what could happen in the finale and maybe the future of Game of Thrones. But for the most part, the battle itself, come on. The battle is epic, it's biblical, it's just badass. It's good versus evil, and the hero win. Yes, spoilers, the heroes win, it's freaking phenomenal. And it's just I think the great thing is Regardless of any of this, acting, performance, photography, money, all the special effects, everything that's also good, but the great thing is the tension building. As a viewer and as a fan, as an audience member in general, you feel the same way John does in this battle. You don't know if you could win, and there's very, very, very much a lot of instances where you feel like he's going to lose. I feel personally it's redundant to try and do this kind of stuff because John can't die twice. It just feels redundant and would be stupid. However, you feel like this is going to be the time where he could die a second time and this is the end. And it's just such a great moment, tension building wise, where you see so many times where he's going to be down. He falls for Ramsey's trap. Rickon ends up eating the bullet. Sorry, rest in peace, Rickon. And then goes right on to attack, loses against the arrows, he fights all these warriors, he freaking almost gets trampled to death, he's about to lose breath, he's about to suffocate and die, and then there it is, you have Peter Baelish coming in like he's fucking Prince Valiant, and then he's gonna fucking save it with Sansa, it was just phenomenal, it's a very phenomenal episode, I loved it, of course the grand finale, the granddaddy of it all, Jon versus Ramsay, Really was hoping for more of a fight between the two. I feel like the great thing and also the worst thing about Ramsey as a character and the way they used him in this episode is that he was a big bitch. Vulgar language included. He was a big bitch. It just was, it is what it is. He was just a huge bitch. He, he played this sadistically, which is what his character is. But at the same time, I feel like the thing about Ramsey Bolton in this episode is that he wanted to torture them before he killed them, and he thought that just because his army's bigger, he could win. But what he underestimates is the fact that John is a great fighter, he's a great warrior, he's been through a lot of great battles and wars, and also there's always the chance that they could get, you know, a good 
reaction from the rest of the North and other people to join in. So I feel like it was stupid of him to think that he could win and not think of these kind of things. But also, I really kind of wanted a legit hand-to-hand -hand fight between the two. I really wish we could have had that. We didn't get that. It kind of just ended with just John blocking his attacks... He was very much on the defense, taking him down, beating the shit out of him until he was a bloody pulp, and then just leaving him off for Sansa. Granted, this is the greatness about the Sansa moments, but I still wish we could have gotten a great hand-to-hand -hand combat battle between just strictly John and Ramsey. Yes, there's the bow and arrow thing, but that's not really what, as a fan of action, you really want to see between those two. You want to see the hero and the villain battle it out once and for all. And we didn't kind of get that. We did kind of get that, but we also didn't at the same time, which is the sad part. But for the most part, it was pretty epic. And of course, the epic climactic end. Sansa get hers. She fucking released the hounds on Ramsay. Ramsay finally eats the bullet. He dies, finally. And thank God they left it hanging there because... I just, I said it previously, and we all wanted it. We wanted just, like, a strict one-hour episode of just Ramsey being tortured and dying. And we didn't get an hour of it, but it felt like an hour because it was just brilliant. It was awesome. It was a phenomenal episode. This is freaking awesome. There's very little tiny things that I don't like about the episode. It's more or less just nitpicky stuff. For the most, for the most part, this is where the episode prevails. In its action, its cinematography, its acting, its performances, its staging, its color palette. The, just most movies that you see in theaters from past, present, and future, for the most part, can't even touch this one episode that a TV show did. That's how phenomenal HBO and Game of Thrones have really positioned themselves in. Where they've made a freaking action sequence, a battle, a war look better than most movies you see today and have seen that's the brilliant it felt like the civil war world war one in the trenches fighting the nazis and, and ww2 combined in medieval times and that's just how brilliant you know game of thrones is and it's just phenomenal i love this episode it was a great epic episode it was the episode that i've always wanted to see in this season particularly, I was also dreading because I really didn't want to see the good guys lose. But this is where the good guys win. Sansa got hers. Granted, I really wish Theon could have been a part of it. I mean, come on. He did lose his dick at the end of the day. That's As, as all men around the world, we feel for the guy. It's just a sad moment in man's history. But it, it just I feel like he could have had something in there. But for the most part, he did get somewhere with the whole Daenerys thing. So kudos for him. But for the most part, it was great also to see Sansa get hers. I mean, for a character who's been brutalized and been just brought down to just filth on a human level from season one to now, to finally be in a position of power where she got revenge is just great. It was brilliant. This was fan service at its best, but it was done perfectly to serve the story of what is Game of Thrones, and I loved it. 10 out of 10. My final verdict is a 10 out of 10. I don't even care what happens in the finale. I give two shits what happens from here on out. I don't care. We got to see freaking Jon Snow kick the shit out of Ramsay. We got to see an epic battle. We got to hear some great conversations. Theon and the Greyjoys met up with Daenerys. We got fucking Ramsay getting eaten by dogs alive. Thank God. And, I mean, come, it's just the greatest battle in Game of Thrones history right here. It was so freaking epic and awesome. Nothing touches this. And it was just... Oh my, it's just a great fucking episode. It was a great battle. I mean, this was a battle you don't want to lose. I mean, come on, as a minority, you just don't want to lose that shit. I mean, like, this is the battle you lose. You, this is not a battle you, you just lose, you go back home, and you're like, ah, I'll try again later, tomorrow. It's like, no, you fucking, you get filleted like a fish, you get your dick chopped off, and you can fucking get eaten by dogs against Whitey. You don't let that lose. You gotta win that battle, and they won, and it's awesome. The fucking House Stark fucking rises again. Ugh, just fucking phenomenal. There's not really... I, I praise the shit out of this episode, but it's hard not to. It's just such a great fucking episode, and it's hands down my favorite of the season, the best of the season, and pretty much just the greatest battle we've seen in Game of Thrones history. I, at this point in time, the finale, granted... It's going to be the great big trial of Game of Thrones history. We got to see whatever the fuck happens to Iron Fist. 
um, which I'm pretty sure he'd probably end up dying because, you know, he's got Marvel stuff to do. And then we have Cersei doing her shit, but at this point in time, I, I practically don't even care. I mean, I got to see what I wanted to see in this season, which was Jon versus Ramsay. Ramsay lose, get his ass kicked, and then die. And then fucking the North wins. You know, fucking the Starks take back the North, they get back Winterfell, which we got. Granted, some people had to die. You know, the Giant and Rickon, rest in peace. I, that's also another thing that I have to really give... HBO Game of Thrones credit because they're really good at making me care as a fan, as an audience member in general, as a viewer, give a shit about characters I don't give a shit dying. I mean, come on, the giant? Who really gave a shit about the giant before he died? I mean, come on, I know I didn't, and he died. It's like, holy shit, he can't die, he's a giant. And then Rickon, I mean, we didn't even see him for like two seasons, and then now we feel bad for him for dying? I mean, it's fucking wacky, it's just crazy. I love it. I love how they do this. The tension, the action the performances, and of course, what's going to happen with the future? I mean, now that they have the North back, there's still a lot more problems. Will John go back to the Wall? There's still the White Walkers to take care of, and of course, how are they going to keep up with withholding, you know, the North? I mean, there's still a lot of en enemies out there. There's still a lot of people who are going to be like, we're not on your side, we were on the Bolton side or whatever the fuck, so it's just a lot of craziness. Davos has this thing, Baelish has this thing, which was the big thing that kind of takes me out of it, which is, yeah, cool, Baelish came in for the win, to, for the save side-by-side side with Sansa, but he knows how to play the game. We all know this. He knows how to play the game, so what is he going to want? I know he, we all know he wants a little something-something from Sansa, but, and John, how, it's just, this, I think the best way to do it is just, let's just live in the moment, which is, this was a great episode, let's just live in the moment of how great this one episode was. We'll deal with the consequences later of what Peter Baelish and whoever the hell else at the North and, of course, the White Walkers will do in the future. W whether it be the finale of the season or, of course, storylines for the next season. But for the most part, this was a win, and I loved it. Very little negatives, a lot of positives. 10 out of 10 for me. Let me know what you personally think in the comment section below. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know this was just mostly just me praising the fucking episode, but I can't help it. It was so freaking good, and I really didn't hate that much about it. If there's anything I do hate about this episode is the fact that we took a little time off from what the battle was towards, you know, Daenerys and her shit, uh, which was very uninteresting to me in general, but there really wasn't anything else besides that. And if there was, it's more or less nitpicky stuff, like Sansa leaving and then somehow being able to get Baelish all the way back over here, which I guess is more or less a Game of Thrones problem in general, which is how do people get from one place in the world to the other place and then back super fast? Are they, is everybody like the Flash? It's very hard and difficult to... It's suspension of disbelief, rather. But still, great episode. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. But that being said and done, hope you guys enjoyed. Shameless plug time. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Josh12. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And hope you guys enjoyed. And this has been Josh12.